Hello, and welcome back to Hoi 4, A Christian of War, Farbrook, under Sinhelm of Farbrook. In the far north of the far north of the far northeast of the Griffonian continent, there lie many scattered settlements of ponies. The most northerly of these is Farbrook, a collection of villages and towns centered on the great, by northern standards, central city of Farbrook proper. In 1007, the ponies of Farbrook are very worried. Though their leader, Sinhem, has proven capable, his seven-year stink as elected high chief is coming to a close, and the Grand Council will soon meet to choose who should be leader over all the villages. Kalmhelm has an impressive record, but many factors are in play that could scuttle his chances at a second term. The most <coughs> notable problems facing Farbrook can be grouped into two broad categories, external danger and internal dissent. Farbrook is small, weak, and well aware of both these facts, and its ponies are none too happy about that. We need to find some way to protect ourselves, whether it just be through a strong military or through making friends with others. Boo! The internal threat is related to the external one. The fear of attack and knowledge of the vulnerability both make Farbrook ponies paranoid, and if the problem is not addressed quickly enough, they will be increasingly open to radical voices who offer easy solutions. Both the Northeastern Socialist Party and the vicious warlike White Hooves Clan offer solutions to this problem, both involving rapid militarization and vigorous suppression of internal enemies. It is unlikely, but possible, that the council could listen to them instead of Kinhelm. Even if they do, danger would not be completely averted, as Sinhelm would then have to deal with the Seemhel with them himself to ensure stability. Farbrook is surrounded mostly by n by neutral or friendly nations that have an especially strong bond with the changes of Griffinson all across the sea. If anything were to happen to them, they would probably turn to us for help first. To the south lies the River Coalition. They see us as their long-term last cousins, and ought to be a threat, but no pony can be sure if they truly have our best interests at heart. Finally, to the southwest lies Hellquill, the Griffin Knightly Order that has ravaged Easter ponies for centuries. They are almost certain to end up a threat, one way or another. One way or another. Ba ba blah blah ba ba be ba bo ba be ba boo ba 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 be ba 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 Mm. Let's see. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Mm. Oh, Queen Griffin, the ruler of the changelings of Griffith, and our friends of many years, has become despondent. She's withdrawn all contact and cut herself off from the outside world, announcing friendship. If to try to get through to her, this will heavily be influenced by how you responded to the initial trade offer. Interesting. We are the Sinhelm of Farbrook, which means we have nothing knowledgeable or about us, and we don't matter, apparently. We have the Great Pax, the ancient Farbrookian Griffiths. Friendship is symbolized by two pairs of tapestries, each weaved by Farbrook and Griffiths. One represents the first sharing from around 800 years ago, whereas the other depicts the frozen refuge. Both events that are very significant for both Griffiths and Farbrookians, collectively known as the Great Pax. This hoofscape stands as a testament of the historic friendship and collaborative nature between the two peoples, transcending biological barriers and proving that harmony is truly universal. The unprotected north, the wild northlands of Griffonia, are dangerous and are like the hicks in fir trees and water town. We cannot afford to close our eyes to danger. Dark magic, the rising dead, diamond dogs and griffin knights, any one of these things could destroy us. And the ponies of Farbrook feel the need for protection. If not dealt with, this may drive them to extremism. We're currently doing the council deliberates. Every seven years or so, the chiefs of the tribes of Farbrook come together to discuss their plans for the future, as well as who will lead him or, or who will head the council until next time. Kinhelm has led us well these last years, but some wonder if he's too soft to save us in these dark, dark times that look to be brewing ahead. Um. After months of deliberation, the council has finally made up their mind on who should lead Farbrook tribes. Their choice, a firm hoof necessary. Get rid of him. 
We need radical leadership. The council has lost faith in Sinhelm's ability to lead us. The lot now falls between two ponies. Appleholm is chief of the Tinglebreed tribe and, and absorbed strange ideas during her youth spent in Prywen. On the other hoof, her Goring. Herman Goering, really, the stern warrior chief of the White Hoof clan, with his dreams of empire. Power struggle within the council. The council has rejected the experienced leadership of Cassinehelm. Who will who will they choose to replace him? The communists have some interesting deal. Let's invite them to the council. We have the White Hoof Insurrectionists. Among the many tribes of Farbrook, the White Hooves are most notorious for their warlike extremist behavior. Their chieftain, Herman Goering, is not a stallion to be trifled with. He is not just the largest brute among his similar similiars, but a dangerous and cunning leader with a vision for the future. Oh, we have a delegation from Greencliffe. A ship from Greencliffe have arrived in Farbrook, filled to the brim with changelings. This is in itself was very strange, as traffic from the isle is usually no more than a few fishing vessels, but the fact that many politicians and governmental representatives were on board were selling. Port authorities were immediately approached by Griffiths and Griffiths, who were requesting an immediate hunting with Greencliffe of Farbrook. The head delegate of speaking of the Queen Grizz's name has informed us of the ship, then their policy. Their ship is one of the many that is headed in various other nations of the continent. Seeking a relation similar to our own, they've come to us proposing a number of amendments to the Great Pacts. The specifics are many, but they mostly encompass an expansion of the existing terms, and the affirmation of the movement of our citizens between our nations. While some of the long-term objectives are somewhat ambitious, the short term goals is to ensure our current state of trade in a very sick one. The Griffin Diplomatic says, we shall honor our foreign sponsors, or F them. We don't care. And we also have these agitators, although industrialization and the workers' rights are unfamiliar concepts to many ponies in Farbrook. This doesn't stop the ENSP and operations in Farbrook. Even this land is largely agrarian, and thus unsuitable for the workers' revolution, according to Marx. They argue that it offers a unique opportunity for creating a pure social society, which is why they're going to take over the council. The council has chosen less to solemnness rule Farbrook for the next few years. Our first action was to dissolve the council and declare Farbrook a sovereign people's republic. By the, by the working pony and for the working pony, we have a squabbling group of Stalinists. That's right. We have a tribal army. The idea of professional standing army is a foreign concept for to the hill ponies. Those who wish to fight simply join revolving war bands with whatever weaponry they can scrounge up, and these often act independently in spite of our leader's desires. Although we can quickly deploy large numbers of ponies when it is required, their training and skill leaves much to be desired. Yet it would be unwise to reform this outdated system too hastily, lest we suffer an armed revolt from the various warrior chieftains who value their social position over anything else. And I do mean they value it over anything else. We're going to, currently, quell dissent. There are those who think that our new form of government is unjust and traditional. In the interest of maintaining peace and stability, we must show these naysayers what's what. We have moderate army influence. The army has a modest amount of influence in the country. Recruitment numbers are he healthy. Recruitment numbers are healthy, and the soldier's profession is regarded as necessary, if a little distasteful. We have moderate army loyalty. The army is loyal to the state, though they often grumble about not being paid enough or not being respected enough. They shouldn't be in the terribly fed them. <laughs> we have the First Workers' Constitution Congress. The revolution has been successful. Now that the reactionaries have been suppressed, it falls to us to safeguard the social state, electing a leader to guide us. We have a choice between the Applethorn, the well-traveled mayor of the world, and Hibstrand, a former community leader of Watertown. I believe, yes, we have nothing important when it comes to that. Griffith awaits answer. We have done what we can to post an question, but the diplomats have made a final demand. We must give them an answer regarding the trade offer now, or else we will take our silence as a refusal. We shall honor our. We can accept this, or send them home. They are no longer welcome. We are breaking our relations with you. Why? I don't know. Kind of felt like it. Kind of felt funny to me, I guess. None of you are even important enough to have any descriptions. What idiots.
Now, we're gonna have Himstrand Socialist Agrarian Party. Himstrand used to be a community leader in nearby Waterhound before he was expelled by trumped up grounds. He believes that it is more important to make the lives of the workers of Farbrook fairer and more equitable. He advocates for peace, happiness, and retreat from the industrial world. Wait, what's this little thing here? It's a bad. I. I, do I have my glasses on? I think, yeah, yeah. Idea? It's a bad idea. I, I don't, I uh, gotta, I gotta choose another person. Do, do, do. <laughs> no, it, it's a bad idea for a, a human. Who's a, what's a human? We're ponies, come on. For a human to choose this option, unless you like getting game overs is that what that says well that's fine no we were ponies right so yeah so whatever whatever this human is it doesn't matter we're fine then so yeah let's go on this path it'll go great don't you agree i think i'm right who cares if it's a bad idea for a human whatever that is a human to go this path <laughs> whatever humans don't matter it's a human Dumb. Idiots. I don't even know what they're mean by that. <coughs> so yeah, let's keep going down this correct path. Um, Himstrand recognizes that much of the evil, evil in this world comes from our inability to live in a correct relationship with nature to end to this end to this very end we must we must abolish the false distinction we make between ourselves and the creatures of the earth such things as stone buildings plows and industrial machines, they must go. In fact, in fact, boom. In fact, you don't, know, you know what? Yeah. What am I doing building factories? Delete. No, no, why am I researching things? No, 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 let me, let me stop, let me stop researching. No, no, let me stop. Fine. These will be the last things I ever research. Nothing more. We have Hipstrand. Hi, Hempstrand. You look like Bob Ross. Second principle. Harmony with the world. B harmony. May I repeat that? Harmony. May I repeat that? True harmony. Now, of course, one thing to keep in mind. We now have... A tribal society. Loosely defined, a tribal society is one where boundaries and hierarchies are not clear. Their leaders have limited powers and are rarely heretical. Family ties are very important, with them most individuals belonging to clan. Some of the populace relies on agriculture. Some. Pff, all of the populace relies on agriculture. All of it. With. All. With all of the pastorials are hunter are hunter scatters. Yes, all of them are one of those two. Specialized crafters, few in numbers, responsible for production. Except that's not true. We got rid of that production thing. And now we have the second principle, harmony with the world. The second principle of Hemstreet's manifesto is that of peace between the ponies of the world. After all, what is to be gained by war? 
We are much better off without weapons or soldiers. What's that? And nations are beginning to agree with what we believe. Do you see that? They are coming under us peacefully because they truly believe in what we say. No, no, we, we, we do not need your factories. We do not need them. They believe in what we're doing. They really do. They believe that we should join together as a world. What's that down the mountain? You too? Of course you're will of course you're allowed to join us. Why wouldn't you be? If you want to be part of us, we will always welcome you. In the tribal lifestyle where everyone is truly free. The third principle of Hemstrand is the abolition of distinctions between each other. Mother, father, mayor, stallion, pony, and griffin, all, even all of these are meaningless. These bonds are really chains, chains that must be broken if we are to be truly free. We are now also a disarmed nation because we don't, you know, we don't, we don't need political advisors. We don't need military advisors. Why would we need those? That's just wrong. I could go right up to substantial no. No, in fact, I want to go down to a detached country. Tribal society is too much for me. Yes, we should purge the army, because we must get rid of the army. No, no, I was about to do it. Fine, we'll do it soon enough. Utopia achieved. At last, Hemstrand's policies have come to fruition. Phillies and colts dance the mellows, perfectly in harmony with nature. Greed and selfishness have been eliminated, and each pony contributes according to his abilities and takes according to his needs. That's right. Oh, what's this? What's this? You guys want to join? Of course you're allowed to. Of course. Why would he ever stop you? Now we, of course, must get rid of the factories. Because it, it would be wrong to ever have factories using... Where? Okay, good. Wait, where is the one civilian factory? Where is it? Where is it? I just noticed that. Where is this one civilian factory? Where did it come from? Where is this? Where are these people hiding? They must... There they are! They thought they could hide from us. They thought they could continue doing... The work of demons. Those horrible, horrible beings. I can't believe they would try that. Yes, of course you're allowed to join, Begurin. Yes, of course. I'm so happy you're wanting to join us. The entire north is with us now. It is beautiful. Beautiful. So incredibly beautiful. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, they have done it. They have done it. They have all understood. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Victory of Fern dead the end of the Dread League. Um. I did not agree to that. No. They are not allowed to be released. Um. I'll deal with that. <laughs> but, um. Yes. They have all bow down to me every single one they have all decided it was the right path okay not these guys 
they all decided that it is the right path for the for all of the Grif of Griffonia to be under me, because we are the true way, the true path. Wait, what's that? Famine strikes. Unfortunately, the policies of forced technology regression have had entirely predictable effects. Our food production is no longer able to keep up with our population. Why is that? Babes are wailing in hunger, mothers have nothing to give them, riots are breaking out all over the country, and all eyes turn to his tent, seeking a way out of this disaster? If only we had known. Oh. I have debug on. <laughs> I was looking to see if there was a way to auto-do it, but no, I had to do it all manually. So we'd have a terrible famine, I'm sure that's fine. <laughs> And now Equestria has joined under me as well. What a good day. Who cares about this disastrous famine? Disaster. Hemstrid's forced primitivization of Farbrook has left it with more ponies than its new lack of infrastructure can support. There's not enough food to feed everyone and something must be done before thousands down to death. Look, we have no factories. We have all of this under our control. Yeah, those are cores. I don't know why they're, 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 they're like that. Um, wait, what? What? Are you? You're a core. Mm. There we go. That should be fine now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yes, yes, who cares about this disastrous famine? We have done it. The, they, have, they have decided to join us. Now, let's see if more will. Hmm. Let's see. And now, even Zebrica has decided to join under us. The entire the entirety of the world believes in our true path to greatness. What's this? I did not I have not noticed this. Ever. There are no palm trees at the South Pole. Rarity. <laughs> what? Why is this here? There's nothing on the north. Why is that there? I've never noticed that. People feel safe. Our army is loyal, disciplined, and restrained with very little way of disorderly conduct or rowdiness. Every in Discretion and crime committed by soldiers vigorously and promptly punished in a way that the people can publicly see. This has led to the people feel more safe and secure at their homes at night. Safe people is the happy people. See, people feel safe and happy. The first thing that the Furious Ponies of Farbrook did was to ask Hempston to help them. He only responded by saying that this is an unfortunate but necessary step in protection, in perfecting of the communist society. Needless to say, they weren't happy with that. So he was overthrown. What? No, no, no. Why would you be over time? No, no, no. That's that's not right. That doesn't seem right. Beg for f <laughs> to who? He was successful. There's no. Everyone joined us out of happiness and joy. There's no one to beg for food to. What do you mean? Our situation is dire. We simply have no more food. Foraging and hunting can only sustain us for so long. We have no choice. But to beg others for help. Beg who? This is fine. I think this is absolutely fine. Like, come on. We have the FBK interim government, provincial government. We're not building anything. We don't have anything. Factories have been eliminated from the world. Uh, pff, sure. <laughs> Why not? Everything is good. I 
And now we have real communism. At last, we have implemented true communism. All of our problems have gone away and we live in a perfect society. Yes. Yes, it is true. Totally didn't cheat or anything. It is true. This, this is the perfect society. Nothing, nothing at all could ever be better than this. We, we don't, yeah, soldiers retiring. That's a good thing. We don't need soldiers, not in this world. No. Yes, those were pr proved our conditions. Of course, because, well, there are no workers besides in the fields. So we, so yeah. Everything is good. Everyone is happy. The terrible famine is ending. And we will have a perfect society. The there is low army influence in our land, as the army has been gotten rid of, and the and the few people that still have guns left because uh, they have not been gotten rid of yet are loyal. The terrible famine has ended, and we have a perfect society. And that, my friends. That is all. That is the end of this world and the end of this campaign. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button. And as always, peace.